contest. That's the English section down there. And that's Castle Corner. Castle Corner, the famous little corner that is used by the Barracas of South Africa. I'll be hoping for good news today. This is the first ball. He's operating from the Rand weekend and umpire Steve Randall is down that end with him. Umpire Randall from Australia officiating at the Rand weekend. And Each is on strike. He's out there with Ian Botham. This is Donald. Quick delivery flies off the outside edge. And back comes the ball from the third man. So he's a good defender. He's not happy. He's probably a sore. He's looking on. But he would put England in. They like to see edge there five over maximum for South Africa because they only allowed England's bat and the news from England's point of view the bat Martin has two side over the SDG all the time he needs this is uh, 15 uh, sorry 10 15 is the time so really there's still if they're able to get that. very wide outside of stunt Randall has a good look at that one jump on you very quickly that's exactly what he did so two on the board now Donald's going flat out the idea from the South African uh, camp is to get two or three early wickets so Donald who's the express bowler in their attack will not worry too much about the odd wide he'll try and knock over both and Gooch and Stewart early on that would be the plan in the South African camp early wickets are so important third slip he would have taken a catch however a good delivery and I can tell you that both of them didn't know much about it it went flying with the outside of his bat so fast that the third man couldn't cut it off Two runs to wrestling five over the maximum for South Africa because they only allowed England 45 from here down there. And no shortage of tension here at the Sydney Pupil. And she has the fight to see what's supremely this over. And finally, just got one in the last burst and puts the middle and hits all sides. Marshalling his troops out there at the SDG. All the time he needs just to make sure his field is in the right positions. But we're off to look to focus out at the end of the As he goes and comes in, he's going to have to run. 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 He's tried, he's had to go for it, he's come down with him in the first place, he's given himself a, a yard start. Not a very good throw in there from Mark Bashwell, wide, and no pace on the throw. He needed more accuracy and more pace, he's going to put Jamie Lee under proper pressure. Chris Wall's a big hitter of the ball, he's looking to go over the top here. He's straight down the ground, well struck, there's an air on the very straight. That's the single. Fast. Five over maximum for South Africa because they only allowed England to set the glass in his troops out there at the SDG. 15, uh, sorry, 10 15 is the top of the line. Stats are all stumped again and uh, all the English were in the ground shouting for another wide. This is not a good start for South Africa. Have a look at him up there. Got themselves all painted up for the occasion. Messages all over the place for folks at home. Oh, 
look at that. Who they want England to win or what? Rob Old, that's a better delivery, nice and straight. And that's the end of a long first over, no wicket for eight. No wicket for 18. So two overs have been bowled and that's the score. What a disastrous start this is for the South Africans. Now Donald's going to have to fix this. He's going to have to slow up a bit and bowl straight. Much better. Both teams uh, pumped up, you can tell. The batsman keen to get on with it. Donald trying to bowl at 100 mile an hour, just lacking a bit of control on his first over. But the South Africans, by winning the toss and electing to bowl, were one early wickets. Try and get into the middle order. See Donald there taking a deep breath. He's certainly quite fast. He, it's obviously going to be a magnificent test cricketer over five days when you can go flat out with the bounce and the short pitch deliveries. But in the one day the Nationals, he has to just his line right. Fingers down the seam. He runs. He's a magnificent athlete. It's the very quick bowler. The edge again down towards third man. This time Hansi Cronier picks it up because it was straight to him. Oh, Rob Old being appealed there for Claude Pine. He's given him out. He's given him out. That did look back. Pooch is on his way. Well, he might have bowled a few wides, but I'll tell you what, he's not a bad bowler. That is a quick delivery. Look back. Didn't hit the inside edge. Gooch didn't look very happy. The South Africans have struck. Oh, I didn't hit the inside edge. That's the question. Sent to hit him on the pad on the way through on the thigh. Sent to miss the bat by a long way. Big shout from Rick. Big excitement from the... South Africans, that's fair enough, but I think that might have been a rough decision. It's one for 20. In the air and over the top. Well, if you really have a go at them, it hits the edge. The chances are it's going to go for four, especially if there's a bit of bounce in the wicket. That's exactly what happened here. Not a bad delivery at all. has troubled uh, Ian Botham, beaten him a couple of times outside off stump, and finally he's been rewarded. Neil Pringle has really settled down after some lower deliveries early on in his spell, and he's had Botham and Alex Stewart in trouble, and here he just gets one to Nipwork, and Botham in the cup drags it on, just gets off stump, and Neil Pringle very excited about that. England in a little bit of trouble now, having lost two wickets, Two for, two for 39. Oh, that's got to be pretty close. Empire Aldridge uh, isn't over keen on giving LBWs. Kepler Vessels uh, really had a heart attack there at first slip. He thought he had the third one. Graham Hick has got the benefit of the doubt in a very, very close decision there for LBW. So uh, that's basically the rules as far as cricketers are concerned you usually reckon that it's going to even out mind you at the time when you get a bad one <laughs> that's not exactly the way you th you think especially not when you're back in the pavilion edge and taken by Kepler Vessels but no ball is called so he's having a charmed life Graham Hick Eric Pringle will want to shoot himself here he, you know he's got uh, Graham Hick in trouble once again. He just gets the ball to leave him and great delivery straight to Kepler Vessels, but the umpire's called no ball. I would have thought that at the moment uh, the little bit of drizzle out there would favour the batting side, make it very difficult for the bowlers. The man at mid-off fielding that ball, wiping it uh, for Merrick Pringle. Pringle has got a little towel there himself. And I would have thought it, uh, it would be favouring the batting side. Every reason to stay out there. That's the other thing you notice there, where the ball really flying away, and, and that would be because uh, because of the little bit of rain on the top of the grass, the ball really skidded off, flew to Jonty Rhodes. As Jonty Rhodes gets the ball really flying to him there, but he's so quick and back up on his feet again, and there's no trouble to him, but he was just shielding his face earlier from the bit of drizzle that's coming down is unpleasant. Well bowled and this one bounces short of Kepler Vessels. Not having a lot of luck, Merrick Pringle. It's 2 for 44 after 10. Well that's a gold straight.
stop. It was fractionally short and it just drops inside the boundary. That's a big shot. Look at one stage as if it would carry all the way. This is a great shot from Alex Stewart. Very quickly onto the back foot. This time Brian McMillan has dropped too short. And Alex Stewart has dragged this from outside the off stump. Here a long way down the member stand. Just bouncing inside the fence. So the partnership between these two continues to blossom, two for 95. So a partnership between Stuart and Hick, which has already added 56 runs off 65 deliveries, now beginning to give England the type of base from which they can build a very big total. South Africa needing a wicket here, needing to separate these two. England with uh, a specialist batting lineup, which ends at number six, Alan Lamb. There are a number of all-rounders on the side. Lewis Reeve and Defeatus. But uh, the South Africans now really need a wicket. And that's right, even if they do get that wicket, Neil Fairbrother has been in good form, and Lamb is a very good one day player. The around is Lewis and Reeve. They've done their damage in this competition at various times as well. So, uh, England happily placed. Two for 95 off 18. And the current rate of progress, England currently scoring at over 5 and over in any case, of course if they maintain that, they'll be well over 250. And that won't be an easy target, target for the South Africans to chase. The ball has been swinging around a bit, so there's a bit of encouragement for the bowlers. And the batsmen have also handled it uh, pretty well. That's a beautiful strike. Coming up for England, just going back to what uh, Ian Chappell said, the way the ball has been moving out there, I would think the England dressing room is, if not in ecstasy, absolutely delighted with the way things have gone. Batting conditions are not at all easy out there. like uh, two noises there, one off the inside edge and um, one on the pad. Plus it was uh, just going down leg side. And umpire Aldridge not really interested. Strikes me as an umpire who uh, is not keen on giving a lot of LBWs. New Zealand representatives on this World Cup panel. Steve Woodward being the other one. This has been a stiff examination for Graham Hick. Came in, was uh, quarter for no ball, was perilously close to being LBW. Last year in England had problems with the ball moving off the scene in the air and the one pitch a little short when the West Indies were his opponents. But, uh, after a modest start today, he's played very well indeed. An excellent running. You have to get round the bowler. The bowler didn't take 
to the Imperium. He did very well. It's two for 103. That's a very good shot. Stewart had already played a magnificent strike of uh, McMillan pulling away to give you the boundary. It's two for 110. Brilliantly done. David Richardson diving away to his right. That's a super catch. McMillan has broken through. Stewart goes. And South Africa badly needed that look. He impresses me, David Richardson. Very good pair of hands. He's done some excellent work in this competition. Nothing any better than that. That was a very good catch. And coming just at the right time for South Africa. Alex Stewart is gone, it's 3 for 110. Brian McMillan having played on this ground uh, previously, just letting Alex Stewart know which was the way back to the pavilion. It's very tense here from South Africa's point of view. The, the bowlers as you can see and the spectators there thoroughly enjoying it. The bowlers not enjoying it quite as much as the spectators as they've been a little bit wayward and uh, England batting has got off to a real good start against our attack. Smith the left hander up there. Wide throw. They've got a few problems South Africa. They've got um, themselves a little bit behind in terms of the over rate. Yes, they the feeling is just a little bit wayward there, but it's, I think the, the pressure that some of these players are confronted with here, they've never ever been in a situation like this before, and they've done extremely well to get into the semi-finals, and you can just see the pressure telling with them with their bowling not being quite as accurate as it might, might be. So it happens in the big time, and that's a magnificent shot. Played away beautifully off his toes. Hick flicking that one to backward square leg. And right into the gap for four. This McMillan has been carrying that foot injury most of the week, whereas Achilles has been fairly swollen. He's been a little bit wayward here. Bowls at full toss just outside the leg stump. And Hick just latches onto that and clips it away for four. Vessels is faced with a little bit of a problem here in that he might have to get McMillan bowled through all his 10 overs so that his injury doesn't come back. That's his 50. A little fumble there. Graham Hick. Takes a big sigh there and out of their seats go the Englishmen. The Union Jacks are aloft. England are going to take some beating here tonight. This ground hit when you see is 50 runs or 56 balls. And when you can think of that start that he got off to where he was caught behind off a no ball and a very good LBW shot. And he's been very lucky, but he's capitalised on that. He's betting brilliantly. I think that's supposed to be a koala bear on the left. And some form of cockatoo on the right. Bold, an appeal for LBW, a deflection from the wicketkeeper, and back for two leg buys, I'd say. This umpire Randall Singh signalling the leg buys. Interesting to see where that pitch, probably just outside leg stump. This umpire Randall here giving Fairbrother the benefit of the doubt, just pitching outside leg stump and uh, flicking him on the pad and getting it past Richardson, who was busy appealing as well, and as a result the ball going through for two leg buys. Good decision by the umpire here. Yeah. Another attempt at North Cutter, which comes through a little slower than his ordinary delivery. It's Fairbrother here and getting into good form. 
and it's the crowd is thoroughly enjoying this run spree that England are on. There you see some of the English supporters there painted up. It must be uh, a little bit cold in those outfits. Square. That'll be four. Good shot. Not a very good delivery, mind you. Can't afford the goal short, especially on a wicket like this one. Pick there, helping that one away down to square leg. This Graham Hick here is in fine form. You can't afford to drop it short like that. And Adrian Capo is a little bit wayward, and he capitalizes on this one. Drags it down. There it goes. Four runs. Hick here is really showing the way and scoring at an extremely fast rate. Last ball this. And a comfortable single down the middle off. I'll try and put a bit of pressure on the fieldsman, but uh, that won't make too much difference. So that's the end of that over from, from Caper. 3 for 147. Looking down over that magnificent Sydney Harbour Bridge and uh, over towards North Sydney. the northern beaches there that's where all the surfers hang out all of the foreshore down there is nice real estate it's uh, hitting to the ground and up into the air Dunkley Rhodes doing the fielding a little jack in the box he is Hansi Cronier just dragging it down and uh Jonty Rudd's jumping right up and plucking it out of the sky. He's not content with that. It's off back to the bowler. Good flying through there by the bowler. And see Cronier making sure there was no single there. As Hansi Cronier followed through and He's with him there, but Jonty Rhodes, Jonty is always in the action, and he's certainly been encouraging the South African team, he never stops, there you see him, he's always keen to help the other players and get them going. And he's beaten the outside edge there again. And see so as the extra bowler, he's doing a great job for South Africa, pulling back the scoring rate. Let's just watch the seam of this ball as it goes down the wicket. It's quite easy to see with uh, the white ball. The seam is actually quite dark. And um, Clive Rice mentioning that he's getting the ball to move around a bit. Probably well, because he's hitting the seam. Oops, and uh, that one is squirted away really down towards third man. Didn't get too easily there. Good over. Three from that one. Three for 150. Yes. Clive, you've played against him. How quick is he by comparison with uh, the really fast bowlers you've faced in England? Well, I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to face him about six weeks ago, and uh, he's as quick as anything that I've faced. When you face Michael Holding and players of that sort of calibre, Alan Donald is that similar sort of speed through the air and where well, he is quite dangerous he also swings it and so when you think you've picked up the line suddenly the ball is swinging away from you you haven't got much time down that end to actually clip him away It'll be very interesting now to see if he can adjust to the left hander Fairbrothers on strike He wanted one, but uh, his partner very definitely didn't. And that's the way to call. If you're going to send your partner back, you've got to do it quickly. That's exactly what Hick did. And um, Fairbrother got the message. This Alan Donald here gets one up to Fairbrother. He's quite keen to get off the mark, but what a beautiful action Alan Donald does have. He's very very lithe and loose and he's very much like an athlete uh, sprinter and what a quick bowler he really is this lucky forward comes charging in and this has been a good over so far that's bang on target 
the Caribbean Broadcasting Union. We'll be taking this telecast here of the semi-final between, between England and South Africa, as well as uh, we've been captivated by yesterday's between New Zealand and Pakistan. It's falling just inside the boundary, got hold of it well enough, got it clear of the field, got it over mid on, and straight enough that uh, Deaton and Wicket couldn't get around. Problems for Kepler Vessels. And Neil Fairbrother has already played two good innings in this World Cup. Very important for him to do well on this tour. And it's 3 for 168 in 34. This is fifth wide, in fact. He's not happy. So a ring is spraying it and really trying as hard as Alan Donald is. Certainly can be quite exasperating. That's beautifully hit. That was four from the time it left the bat. There's a third man. He had absolutely no chance of getting around for it. Graham Hook showing the form, which has uh, gained him the reputation. Hasn't quite lived up to it in his international career so far. But this is a top innings after a shaky start. There are some wonderful young cricketers around uh, in the world scene at the moment. And Graham Hick is one of them. As Tony points out, he hasn't quite lived up to his potential. Gained his record uh, playing largely in county cricket when trying to qualify for England. But there was that lovely touch of class about his play. And no better example than that stroke away through extra cover. We saw some shots yesterday from the young Pakistani Ain Zaman Al Haq over in uh, Auckland at Eden Park. But none were better than that. That certainly has been the shot of the day so far. He hit it cleanly, hit it hard, and found the gap. So two boundaries. the statistics on Graham Hicks, 73. I say he started shakily, in fact, the very first ball he received from Merrick Pringle. Very close uh, decision on an appeal for a leg before went his way. He was then dropped, a correction, he was caught at first slip after the third delivery he faced, but it was a no ball also from Pringle. And this so often happens, that kind of luck going your ways often means a big score. today is that he's been well over the ball in playing strokes square the wicket on the offside. He's had three that have come off the bottom edge and have bounced away very, very high. So he's not playing them with uh, the upward swing of the bat, but rolling his wrists over the top. I'll tell you another thing about him too, he's just closed the face of his bat a bit as he waits for the bowler to come in. In England last year it was very, very open. Well, this really is high class batting now by Graham Hick. He's gathering his runs in the orthodox fashion. The same thing yesterday we saw from Inzamam in that man of the match performance for Pakistan. No slogging. Just good, clean cricket shots. The whole innings has been a delight to watch so far for the spectators here at the ground and for viewers. Three for 179. We're into the 35th over. 75 to Graham Hick and 28 to Fairbrother. Fairbrother has played a big part in this partnership. So Al, Al 
Alan Donald will be thankful to get through that over. 14 runs coming off it, the most expensive of the innings. And England are through for 182. And even though we started this afternoon with about 20 to 3, very heavy overcast and a bit of rain causing the delayed start of about 10 minutes. halfway mark in this uh, semi-final between England and South Africa. It was looking to me as so though 275 was quite possible for England. They then had a bit of a hiccup, but now they've come back again. And uh, it is possible. They've wickets in hand, seven of them at the moment. And there are plenty of problems there for a couple of vessels who put England into bat. So Mike Pringle has come back. He had a very good first spell. Six overs, two maidens, one for 20. That will make it a both of them. But there is a question now as to whether England will have all 50 overs, which they were allotted at the start of their innings. There's still another 14 overs to go after this one. And just about three quarters of an hour left for them to be got through. It looks as if uh, South Africa are going to be short on the number of overs of 50. That's as good a ball as we've seen all day. Mike Pringle bowled some absolute crackers early on. I have no idea how that missed. He had a magnificent spell. Lancaster Park in Christchurch against the West Indies on a pitch not dissimilar to this one. It was uh, giving the, the cricket bowlers some assistance. And he destroyed the West Indies with four early wickets. They were 19 for four and never recovered. This was for 136 in that match. And he's bowled really well again here. Just to continue what Tony was saying about uh, the possibility of South Africa falling short in their overs. 50 at the moment, the maximum for England. And we'll come to the playing condition in just a moment. That will be in uh, the minds of these two batsmen, too, Tony. They might realise already that uh, they'll be short in the overs. So they'll have a dash at it probably two or three overs before might normally be the case yes I think I spotted in the last uh, couple of overs hit uh, and failed by having a look at the scoreboard and I think they do realize that uh, they only have about 45 minutes left now and uh, for one of them it's even less than that Neil Fairbrother the man to go Pringle deserved that as much as any bowler could deserve anything been a very good exhibition of bowling in what has been something of a run glut for England. 4 for 183. Coming back uh, between a very large gig for the left-hander. He's brought the ball back into him earlier and absolutely sliced him in half. Now he just about sliced the stump in half. So 4 for 183 for another gun for 28. A change in bowling. Donald has come off and Richard Snell has come on. This is what uh, happened to Neil Fairbrother. Pringle once again has got the leg cutter to work. It's the in cutter to the left hander. And it should give quite a nice sight on stump vision. Only for a moment though. if he wants to get it through. It's just like Imran Khan's cornered Tigers. Fight till the last moment. That's what the South Africans are doing at the moment. Everyone inside that circle moving in with the bowler. Can't do much about that. Just about the perfect one-day 
shot. As Richie says, he just can't do anything about it. Keep a dive despairingly. Arms went up in the air and shoulders drooped. And the umpire's arm went out to signal four. So four more to Hick. He's got 83 now. Top innings by him. And he's approaching his highest score in one-day internationals. Not anymore. John DeRoad's in the way. And anything close to him is going to be hauled down as he pulled that one down. Two-handed. And Graham Hick goes for 83. Tremendous innings by him. And I suppose Australians, even though they're not involved in this conflict, will point to the fact that the score is 187. Is he a great fielder? He's done some wonderful things, including that run out of Insulam up in Brisbane. That was a super catch. Hick out for 83, a standing ovation for the England batsman, 5 for 187. Brilliant work from John D. Rhodes, Richardson on the bowler. High and to his left. Didn't just go for it one hand, but judged it perfectly. And Chris Lewis, the man who had to pass a fitness test, and that was a fitness test on his bowling. They knew he was fit to field because he fielded brilliantly at the MCG the other day. But uh, he had to get through a fitness test here before he'd be included in the final 11. So he will be able to take his full place in the side. Very important man in the England attack. The New Zealanders we were mentioning earlier going to Barbados for the test match over the Easter weekend and the Barbados over that Easter weekend won't see Markham Marshall in fact international cricket will not see Markham Marshall on the field again he's retired from international cricket following the World Cup great bowler so Lamb gets off the mark Malcolm Marshall dropped from the West Indies team. In fact, he made the comment that he started as the 12th man in the West Indies team in his first series in India back in 1977-78, 77-78, and finished off as 12th man at the MCG against Australia the other night. Reason given was that he had a, an ankle injury which kept him out of contention, which is strange when you consider that he played for Waverley here in the grade semi-final in Sydney yesterday and bowled 22 overs. and getting them quite easily <clears throat> both batsmen here with uh, injury problems Alan Lam has overcome his he's played only the previous two matches Chris Lewis with the side strain which has kept him from bowling but the South Africans will well remember tremendous innings which won the match for England along with Alex Stewart in the qualifying round at the MCG last week One thing I can, uh, can guarantee you is that uh, Alan Lamb will have his hamstrings stretched out there by Chris Lewis. He has a great record. He's played 116 matches, and that is an excellent average in limited overs cricket. We we're talking about scores around about uh, the 220-250 mark, and he averages 40, and his strike rate is 74, almost 75 runs per 100 balls. Had a close look at that one. It was a little wide. Alan Lamb has got the reputation of not only being an outstanding batsman at test level, but perhaps even more so in the one-day variety. This is his 18th match in World Cup competition. His third World Cup. And that very high average, over 50. Not many batsmen have an average as high as that in one-day cricket. Oh, that's beautifully played. It's a lovely on drive from the most pleasing shots in cricket and played pleasingly by 
by Chris Lewis for four. It's five for 194. Just going back to the problem of uh, the number of overs to be bowled, and a reminder that if the team batting first um, doesn't get the full 50 overs to which they're entitled by the scheduled time, the ending of the first session, the over in progress should be completed, and the innings of the team batting second is limited to the same number of overs. Be a call from umpire Randall. Yes, the full playing condition in uh, the World Cup rules reads that if the side in the field in the first innings doesn't get through its full 50 overs, it only gets the same number of overs bowled to it. So we're into number 39 now, about half an hour to go. Well, he certainly has put the back to that one with good effect. I don't suppose you could say it was as orthodox a shot as his on drive to four in the previous over, but it gained him the same number of runs. It's wide enough to be called to if uh, Lewis hadn't got the bat on it. Both these fellas out there, Lewis and Lamb, are extremely good at uh, both varieties of the game, the test match and the limited overs match. And you must be these days in international cricket if you're to get anywhere at all. Any international cricketer to be called by that name must be very, very good at uh, both types of game. The land has a problem of going back. That can't do it. Now Richard Snell has had difficulty today with... Uh, well, he's going to go back over the wicket. He came around for that delivery, but he's had real difficulty with uh, not only his width, but his length. But early on, especially his width, he was very wide of off stump and he was cut away quite frequently, as he was by Lewis. But he's now gone back over the wicket. I don't know if a certain way he would have gone around to Lewis just for that uh, one delivery. Over it's five for two or two. It's good off the last 11 balls, England. And he's coming back with a swimming go. Great running. Almost a double play, but excellent cricket by Lewis. Chris Lewis taking on the fieldsman. Superb athlete. He is very, very quick between the wickets there. And he made his mind up almost immediately he's going to come back for two there. Good straight throw. <laughs> almost a decapitation there as uh, <laughs> the ball was thrown up to the keeper. It's well placed then for two again. off the over so far, still one ball to go. Chris Lewis was even even thinking about a third run there, but uh, he's a lot quicker than Alan Mann. Something to do with uh, age. Something to do with the length of his legs, I think. It's well played. Open runs off the over. Five for 221. Those are just about Alan Donald's most expensive figures in this competition. He's gone, bottom edge. That's the break that South Africa needed. Going for the square cut. It was wide enough to hit. Bam, getting a thicky spot on edge and the wicket keeper doing the rest. Well, it was almost wide enough if Alan Lamb had missed it for the umpire to call wide. But he's just got a, a little bottom edge on that. Very unfortunate for Alan Lamb just as he was starting to... Get into his stride there. And Alan Donald strikes with his first ball back. There, Richardson's again, no problem taking the catch. Adam Lamb goes for 19. 
England are six for 221. Alan Lamb, the victim of Alan McDonald's first ball that over. Not getting across to this ball. And just the bottom of the bat there being enough. The ball carrying straight through to Dave Richardson. Just off the tail end of the bat. And that's uh, Alan Lamb unlucky almost to reach that ball. Six for 223. Full house, plenty of excitement. The lights taking effect now on the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's quite a dull evening. Bernard Reeve with nothing to do but go after the bowling. Looks just keyed up, very anxious to get it. Alan Donald. No ball. Well, there were a few extras early in the innings. Alan Donald was guilty earlier of bowling the odd wide as well. Both he and Merrick Pringle have trouble with wides and no balls at the start of the innings. Six no balls, nine wides, and that's uh, already 15 extra runs and 15 extra deliveries, which is one reason that in fact South Africa are behind on their over rate, and the benefit of those 15 extra deliveries won't be seen because of South Africa won't bowl all their overs. Charts and got his back to it. Lewis is coming through, just the single. Yes, really, it's disappointing in the final when you don't get your full 50 overs. You play in the game. They well, started 10 minutes late, but there was an extra 10 minutes taken out of the tea break. And the official finishing set time is 10 minutes past 6. It really does put pressure on anyone who deserved to get their full 50 overs. Well, England have realised for some time now that they were unlikely to get those full 50 overs. And they must have planned their batting accordingly. Good hit, good clean hit down the ground. Just the single. Six for 226. And Merrick Pringle to continue. He's bowled his eight overs very well for 28 runs, taking two wickets as well. He's going to be bowling to Chris Lewis. The South Africa not winning any fence here at the City Pick Ground by slowing down the overs bowled. It is a 50 over contest and really they should be penalised. something that they'll have to look at in walk. They maintained an average rate of round about five runs and over all the way through their innings. One or two ups and downs there. That's where the rate's always been. Then it leave both he's in trouble. Ah, oh, that's good running. He's carrying an injury too, Dermot Reeve, but he's a good competitor. He's not happy, he's probably a bit sore, but he took him on. That's right, he's had to go for it. He's come down the wicket in the first place. He's given himself a, a yard start. But not a very good throw in there from Mark Rushmere. Wide, and no pace on the throw. He needed more accuracy and more pace if he was going to put Dermot Reeve under proper pressure. Chris Lewis, a big hitter of the ball. He's looking to go over the top here. Straight down the ground, well struck, but there's an air that went off very straight. That's the single. Good runs for England, David. Everyone's vital. Chris Lewis, of course, will be aiming to see if he can find a gap somewhere else. He wants the odd boundary as well, just to boost this England total. But they won't complain. If they pick up a run of ball, they're doing okay. Anything on top of that, the odd four, perhaps the odd six will be a bonus. Good hit, finds the gap, four runs. This will be in this time, Ashley Fingal shows the <laughs> enthusiasm he's shown all day really, he's very competitive, he was lucky he didn't get a ricochet there for extra runs. He's just got back there and if that ball had ricocheted off, he'd have been off for one very quickly. Good throw from Mary Pringle, dead on target. Donald, chipped away nicely through the gap, it's going to go all the way, Dermot Reeve doing a great job for England. Dermot Reeve's timed this one very well also. And no man at that gap, he split the two men at the wicket and mid on, hit this ball perfectly and that's raced away again, that's four more very useful runs to England. And Dermot Reeve doing exactly what he came in to do. 
He's messing around with the bowlers here. He's creating space for himself. And that's all England need. Four runs. No one bowling as fast and having accuracy is another thing here. He's going flat out still. He's tenth over. He's got him away again. No ball as well. Great play by Dermot Reed. He ran all the way out to the centre of the Sydney cricket ground. He knew time was going quickly for England. He's playing superbly. Dermot Reed did very well to get so much bat on this. Alan Donald dropped it in short. And as we know, he's by no means a slow bowler. Dermot Reed had actually advanced on him. And again, he finds the gap. This time over with wicket. And wider than man at deep square leg. That's two, ball, two fours of successive balls. the last over, it's taking so long to bowl with the runs flowing. It's gone again, that could be six, that's a big long hit. Just bounces over the fence, great over for England. This is fabulous stuff for England. Dermot Reid always had a very good look at Alan Donald in the nets at Warwickshire. And uh, shake, rattle and roll there, enjoying every moment of this. It's another great shot from Dermot Reid, keeps his eye on the ball. And watches it disappear like a long three iron. When was hit on the Sydney cricket ground too, it was only going over, it just bounced just in front of the fence and over into the crowd. It's a great personalities in the crowd here at the Sydney cricket ground, the Doug Robber stand. This probably will be the last over. Here comes Donald. He's gone crash through mid off, he mightn't get this. The person is coming around, yes he will. Dermot Reid timing the ball superbly. Dermot Reid having a real purple patch here. And loving it. And loving every moment. He's a good competitor, Dermot Reid. Very useful all rounder. Ideally suited to this sort of game in this sort of situation. And if you look at that strike rate, 183 runs per 100 balls. You can see he's doing a good job. It's a bottom edge. Two more, surely. Brings up the 250 for England. Superb batting exhibition here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. That was well bowled this time by Alan Donalds. Right up in the block hole. Clamping down at Reeve for pace. With the space in. But even then, he managed to squeeze the ball away for two more. This has been uh, a very, very good over indeed for England. Will be the last over, which one at 6 9 here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Two balls to be bowled by Donald, who's certainly taking his time going back to his mark. They've slowed the game down South Africa. Prepared to sacrifice the opportunity of batting 50 overs themselves. Down to one on, so one ball remaining still 609. Oh, we walk slowly back to his mark. 17 runs of this over so far. And the clock's just moved to 610 on the main scoreboard. So if that is a tactic, it's worked very well for South Africa. The last thing they would have wanted to see was another 17, 18 runs coming from the next over. And that's a rule that have to be changed for the next World Cup. You can't have a side only receiving 46 hours in a lot of time. 45 overs in fact. Let's pop that down to one on, just the single. Look at the umpire, six for 252. And the players coming off the ground after 45 overs. That's a disappointing aspect. They only received 45 overs, but England have done very well. Six for 252. Celebrations of the biggest